Hi, we're glad that you're here with us in worship today. We want to invite you to download our app if you've not done that. And maybe today is the first time you're worshiping with us. Thank you so much for joining us. We wanna encourage you to go to the I'm new here on our app, fill out that form and let us know that you were with us. That is our way to be able to connect with you, to follow up with you, to try to get you plugged into the ministries that can assist you in your faith journey, a way to welcome you in and just to say hi. Maybe you're joining us as usual, and maybe you joined us for our 930 service last week with Pastor Dennis, where he reminded us never to give up, that our strength comes from Jesus and that we need to change our perspective in order to be able to find peace in this world. Maybe you joined us at 11 with Pastor Brandy, and she reminded us that God is constantly working all around us to constant be, constantly be looking for the purpose that he has called us to. And that purpose might not be one big thing, but he calls us every single day to purposes if we just open our eyes to them. So we are ready to tune in and see what God wants to speak into our hearts today. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you enjoy your worship experience.
give him a hand clap of praise this morning. And doesn't this band sound amazing today? It's so good to be in worship with you all today. It's so nice to have you joining us online. Thank you so much to all of you for making us part of your weekend. We are glad that you are here, glad to be back together, thankful and grateful. Amen? Amen. If you want to wave to the people across the room, say good morning, and Pastor Brandy's going to come up with a few announcements. Pastor Dennis is going to come up with a few announcements. <laughs> Brandy's looking at me like, it's not me today. <laughs> Good morning. We're glad you're worshiping with us this morning online as well. Um, I announced I was retiring and my body decided to start falling apart on me, so hopefully this will be temporary. Um, we have, looking around at the world today, there's just all sorts of things going on, and we know that. It seems like every day there's something new that pops up, but but we are at the same point here in the church. Every day we're trying to become a little stronger and a little bit uh, more in tune and more out in the community. Our community ministries, our uh, online Bible studies, our children and our youth activities, everything is starting to gear up for that day when we can start to become even stronger. So as we do that, uh, continue to keep in touch. You can go onto our webpage, our, our uh, app, or our Facebook page and get up to dates on all of our new Bible studies that are coming out. There are new ones rolling out every month and you can join in at any time on those. Uh, we're also gonna be starting a financial peace class in February if you're struggling with um, finances. This is one of uh, Christian financial management programs. It has been tested and proven by, uh, by dozens of people here within this congregation as well as thousands of people um, around the world and getting our, our own checkbooks in order. So there's lots of things happening. Support us, um, keep in track. There's lots of things if you wanna get involved and we'd love to see um, everybody get involved in something that's taking place. But uh, we are moving ever closer as we um, continue to reach forward as a Purple Door Church. We are claiming that this community is still the community of the Purple Door Church, and we're gonna do everything we can to make that happen. So we're glad you're joining us today, and uh, for all of you that are here in-house as well, let's continue to worship. Would you stand? It's time for the sleeper to wake. It's time for the old ways to change. I hear the spirit say it's time. It's time for
Would you pray with me? Let's welcome him into this place this morning. God, we have opened up the windows. We've opened up our hearts. We invite you to come. It may look a little different, God, because we can't lift our voices to you the way that we have in the past, but we can lift our hearts. We can lift our hands. And we can say, come, God, come. You are welcome in this place. So God, set our hearts and our minds on the things that are above. And help us just to settle into your presence. Thank you for wanting to be with us, God. We love you so much. In your name, amen. I um, choose music uh, quite a bit in advance for Sunday mornings. We practice on Thursday nights, and so our amazing band, they have to have some time to kind of sit with the music a little bit. You know, I've been telling you, for those of you who have um, been in our congregation for many years, I, I have told you often that God speaks to my into my life in themes. And so I can recall, like, sharing with you different themes where he's just, like, pounding it into me. Everything at once is this theme. And the theme that he's been pounding into me lately is that he orders our steps. And I know that you've heard me say that to you in the most recent past, that he orders our steps, we can be confident in that. Um, for those of you who don't know, my family is a foster family, 
And uh, we take in um, babies, um, mostly drug-exposed babies. And um, we've had two placements so far. But this last placement we've had for a year and a half, and we got her at three days old. And on Thursday night, her parents are doing awesome. Let me back up and say that. They are incredible people. We love them so much. And God has just, from the very beginning, he's been weaving all of this together. And it's been just such an incredible thing to see. This past Thursday, Thursday night's our practice night, um, I got a call from our caseworker that they would like to see the little little girl home with her family permanently by next weekend. And one of the things about foster care is you just never know what is going to happen. Everything can change just like that. And while we are so incredibly happy for her parents, I was broken. We knew this day would come. Um, The song that I chose for this weekend is Oceans. And the practice, I couldn't even get through it, so I'm hopeful today that I can. But God calls us. He calls us out into the unknown. I had no idea that that was going to happen on Thursday, but I told my husband God knew. He knew when I woke up that morning exactly that what I was going to face. He calls us to go deeper with him. He calls us into great purposes, as Pastor Brandy said last weekend, and he tells us to never give up, as Pastor Dennis said weekend last weekend. All of these things were like going through my head of the sermons from you guys last weekend. It doesn't mean that in that calling we won't hurt. But you know what? I came to the conclusion that life is going to hurt anyway. Why not be hurt being used by God? Why not be hurt in his calling, knowing that he is doing something greater and deeper than we could ever comprehend? He has a plan. He has a purpose. He orders our steps. And where I came in Thursday so broken, this morning I came in knowing that God is God. And he could be weaving together this beautiful story between our family and our baby's family. And that is exciting. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to give you hope and a future. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And he is not surprised by anything that we wake up to. So if you have felt him calling you to something and you've been like, "Mm, that could hurt me, I want to encourage you to take the step. Take the step. Obedience does not require emotion. Obedience only requires resolve. That you will step into those unknown waters and you will trust him because he's got you.
We thank you for your word that we can stand upon, that you tell us in the Bible that you will order our steps and that, God, we can cling to that. We thank you that you see us and that you know us and that you entrust us with so much. That is how much you think of us, that you give us these tasks to carry out, knowing that we are weak and we are frail and that we may fail. But God, your faith in us is tremendous. And so God, I pray for any person who may be sitting in this room or sitting at home thinking, I am not enough. I cannot do what he has called me to do. There is no way I will fail. God, I pray that you will speak boldness into their lives. I pray that you will fill them with a hope and with a courage that they can rise up and conquer that first step that resolve of obedience. God, you are a God of wonders, a God of miracles, and we have seen your hand move. May you continue to work through us so that we can see your miracles even more in this day. Make us bold. Allow us to find the boldness to be obedient to your calling. Allow us to find the boldness to never give up. We love you. We honor you and we praise you. You are a good and faithful God. In your name, amen. You may be seated. We are continuing. We are continuing in um, this series on recalculating. How do we change course in the midst of the detours that we run along in life every single day? What do we do? Where do we go? How do we get ourselves back on track? Nothing we do in life anymore can be taken for granted, can it? And so we need to figure out those ways to get ourselves centered again, back on track, so that our lives do not stay on those detours eternally. Because we never know from time to time what's going to happen, but we need to be able, we need to be ready to respond. Now it'd be nice if I'm in my car and I come across an accident or a detour, I can just hit recalculate or else it comes up all on its own and it gives me an alternative direction to get me back on track. Boy, I wish I had an app for that one for my life. Well, we need to figure out how we do that. Today, the sermon is entitled, Keep on Singing. And I'm referring back to Psalm 98. I'm just going to read the first six verses of Psalm 98, but you get the psalmist's direction. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let's open with prayer. Lord, in all that we do, we just give you thanks. Join us on this day as we gather, as we come seeking you. Fill us with your song. And let us keep on singing. We just call upon your presence now in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. It's hard 
living in the world today because we never do know what's going to happen. We've got, every time we, we hear another story, it just sinks us deeper and further off course, and we wonder, are we ever going to get back to where it was before? You know, I was reading the, on Facebook last night and today that now we have churches all over the country that are shutting down today because of fears. We've got governments shutting down because of fears. We've got an entire world that is struggling right now, and everybody's trying to get back on track, but how do we do it? Because in the midst of that, then we have life's issues as well. Family problems, health problems, financial problems. How do we get back on track? How do we keep hearing the message of God speaking to us? Keep on singing. It's easier said than done. How do we keep on singing? What song plays in your hearts? Have you ever stopped to think about how music and songs affect us? They can literally take us out of our time and into a new place. Immediately, there are those songs that the minute they come on, you can be in a store, wherever you may be, and there's music playing, but when, when a song that touches you all of a sudden happens, your ears tune into it, and it's like, stop, listen. I had a colleague of mine, a pastor friend that uh, used to, we golfed all the time, and, and Brad and I were very competitive, and Brad always started out better than I did. He'd always get a couple of stroke lead on me in the first couple of holes. By the fourth, fifth, sixth hole, I'd start to catch up to him, and then he'd start pushing. And the harder he pushed and the, and the more agitated he got, the worse he got. And then I'd pick up on him three or four strokes. And, and there were an occasional word that probably should not come out of a pastor's mouth. And, and he had, I've seen him throw a club a time or two. But there would come a point when he knew he had gotten off track. And I always knew that point because usually about the fifth fairway, it was a, the course we played was a long fifth fairway. And, and all of a sudden I would start hearing, onward Christian soldiers, or whatever, amazing grace, how great thou art. He started singing hymns. He knew he had to do something to get out of his funk if he were ever going to get his golf game down to beat me. <laughs> and so he would go back to hymns. To calm him down, get him centered. Usually by then he had already given me enough strokes that I was able to coast on through. Sue and I have been going through boxes and trying to pare down some stuff, and she ran across a box of our memories. And we spent some time with that this week, but in that was her box of her, um, her 45 and then a whole stack of albums from the 70s and 80s. And she didn't want to throw them out, but what are we going to do with them? We didn't want to go out and buy an LP player. And so I said, try Amazon Music. And they had every single one of those albums on there. And so Sue listened to every single album this week. And we walked down memory lane. It brought back a whole different world. She got to hear some of her Bobby Sherman. We listened to Olivia Newton-John. We listened to all sorts of people. And it transported us back to the 70s, to the 80s. She played Olivia Newton-John. When I Honestly Love You came in, came on, it immediately transports me back to the, to the University of Toledo convention, well, it was a basketball stadium, at a concert of Olivia back in 1977. When Olivia sang that song, I proposed to Sue. That song was sung at our wedding. And so that song came on, and there's just silence because all of a sudden we're not sitting in a living room. We're in a different place. Every time I hear the song, Lift High the Cross, it's a song that's sung as 
pastors are walking down the aisle at Hoover Auditorium and it is played on the organ as loud as it can be and 3,000 voices lifting up that song, Lift High the Cross. And it's the ordination song that every pastor has walked down except for this past year's. It's the song that I walked down for my ordination. Ironically, the liturgist in the 830 service this morning was someone that walked down that aisle with me that year in 1984. When I hear that song, it's not in a church, it's not in a setting. I'm in Hoover Auditorium, and I'm walking down to have the bishop place his hand on me and ordain me. We need to find those songs in our life. We need to be able to keep on singing. To know that in no matter what we do, we can get ourselves back on track. Sometimes we need to stop the world and we need to be able to go back to, a, to an event, a song, it, to, to get us centered again, to see that life can be okay. And so today I want to... I want to talk just a little bit about what does it take to get us back to singing our song? What does it take for us to get back on track when life seems to be knocking us around? It shouldn't take a pandemic or a catastrophe to get us appreciating what's, what's right in the world. You know, now we look back at the, some of the things that we've been missing that we took so much for granted for, and now we, we miss them. But why, would it, why should it take a pandemic to do that to us? Why do we have to wait until we've lost someone that we love before we appreciate the lives around us? Why is it we have to realize the fact that we've walked away from God and and we haven't even realized we've done it. You see, it shouldn't take a, an issue in our life. It shouldn't take a pandemic. It shouldn't take a catastrophe to get us back on track. We've got to be able to find ways to keep on singing. We need to be able to seize the moment now. We all have those opportunities. We've got jobs and duties that have to be done. There's work to be done. There's laundry to be done. There's, there's projects to be done. There's work at, and in our jobs that have to be done. But then there's those other opportunities to say, well, we can go out and do something with the kids or we can go do something together. We can, we can, we can make something happen. No, I've got too much to do. I've sat at the bedside of too many people who are looking at their last days of life and they're reminiscing about all the things they regretted they never got a chance to do or say. And every time I've heard that, I've, it's, it's ingrained in me, don't die with any regrets left. If you need to say something, if you need to forgive someone, if you need to pray for someone, if you need to go before someone, do it. Don't sit someday when you're not able to and regret the fact that you let your whole life go without doing that. The work and the toil and the mess and the stuff that we've got to do can wait. Never once have I heard anybody on death's bed say, well, I didn't spend enough time at work. Or I think I spent too much time with my family. You know, do you have good days? Do you have bad days? We all get, get sucked up in, in all the garbage that's going on in the world. We, we get caught up in the mess, and it takes over our heads, and it becomes that's all we can do. How do we get away from that? How do we keep on singing our song? How do we move beyond it? Now, think back to this last week. How many good days out of this past week did you have? How many days would you say, that was a good day, that was a bad day? Don't ever want to see that day again. I never want to see a Thursday night like I had this past week. How many good days and bad days have you had? If, you've only, if you can only look at that and say, you know, I had one or two good days. We need to get back on track. You know, we're all going to have bad days. We're going to have days we grieve. We're going to have days we're sad. We're going to have days that we just can't even figure out how to get out of bed in the morning. Those are going to be there. 
But if you're only having those good days occasionally, you need to figure out how to get back on track, how to sing your song, how to figure out how to make things happen again. Keep on singing. One of my favorite stories is a story that was told of a little boy, a three-year-old boy, Michael, his mother, Karen. They, they went to a church by the name of Panther Creek United Methodist Church in Morristown, Tennessee. Karen was pregnant, gave birth to a little girl that was in immediately distra immediate distress. They rushed her to intensive care, ICU, infant intensive care in Knoxville, Tennessee. And they were monitoring her constantly and things just continued to get worse. Her breathing became more and more shallow. Things got worse each day. Now, Michael, the three-year-old son, wanted to see his baby sister. He wanted to sing to her. And uh, children weren't allowed into the infant intensive care unit. And, and he wanted to sing. And they finally told Karen, you probably should be talking to your pastor or your priest because you're probably going to have to be making funeral plans. Probably in the next couple of days. And so she decided Michael's going to see his baby sister. And so she dressed him up in a, in a set of scrubs on a three-year-old. And she tried to sneak him in, only the head nurse saw it, and immediately charged up and said, children are not allowed in here. They cannot be in this space. Karen's mom came out and said, if she only has a couple days to live, my son needs to sing to her. And so the nurse backed off and followed them as they went up to this little baby with monitors going off and, and just struggling to breathe with every breath. And Michael couldn't touch her, but he leaned in close and he did this. You are my sunshine, my every sunshine. You make me happy when the skies are gray. And little baby started to calm down. And the monitor started to come down and some of the beeping quit and, and Karen was saying, keep on singing, Michael, keep on singing. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. And when he quit, all of the monitors had quit beeping. And this little girl was breathing and sleeping for the first time since she'd been born. They said that head nurse was sitting there bawling like a baby. The next day, they took their daughter home, not to a funeral home, to their home. Two weeks later, the pastor of that um, Panther Creek United Methodist Church, his name is um, Steve Sally, Steve Sally, said two weeks later, Karen and Michael brought that little baby girl to be baptized. The whole church was there that day. Everybody was going to be a part of that baptism. You know what song they sang? You know who led it? A three-year-old. Keep on singing, Michael. Keep on singing. Pastor Sally talked to a man by the name of Len Sweet. Now, Len was the president of United Theological Seminary, where I graduated from over in Dayton. He went on from there to um, uh, be at Drew University. He's been in several universities. He's written thousands of articles. He's an inspirational speaker. And Steve told him this story. And Len was leading a convention at uh, Lake Junaluska in North Carolina in this huge auditorium. And he told that story. And it was quiet. And a lady in the back all of a sudden stands up saying, it's true, it's true. 
it's true. Those are my grandchildren. Lynn said, we stopped what we were doing and we sang a song. And you could have seen the angels around us. What song do you need to be singing in your life? What song do you need to do to get back on track? What, what, maybe it's a verse of scripture. Maybe it's a song in your head. Sing it. Now, you may be saying, preacher, you don't want me to sing. And you're probably right. Just put your mask on tight. You know, maybe it's not a song that we're singing. Maybe it's, maybe it's reaching out and taking a plate of cookies to someone and saying, we're thinking about you, we love you. Maybe it's dropping someone a note. Maybe it's, it's getting your eyes off of your own issues and looking outside at what else can you be doing instead of feeling sorry for ourselves, reaching out to other people. Keep on singing your song. Don't ever give up. And when you find yourself getting so far off track that you can't even, you, you can't even cope with the world, and too many times our emotions take us there, Find your song and find that place where God can speak to you and say, it's going to be okay. Keep on singing. Don't ever give up who you are and who God is in the midst of us. If you have a song, sing it. If you have a verse, repeat it. If you have a picture in your mind, then see it and allow your life to be centered in Jesus. Open up the windows and let the sun shine in. Because we need to know that God is with us, and sometimes we forget it. Sing your song and keep on singing so that we may live life every day so that someone else can hear their song too. Keep on singing, no matter what you do. Don't ever forget, God is right there singing alongside with us. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, in the midst of the life that you give us, the power that you lead us with, the songs that you place within us, no matter where we are, whether we're having a day that's just horrendous or a day that we're looking out and praising you with all the joy we can muster, we know you're there for us. Continue to fill us with your love, your grace, your peace, so that we can see that amongst all the other things going on in our lives, that we can sing our song, your song that's planted within us. And that others can hear that song and see it in us as well. Lord, bless us and keep us. Wrap your arms around us that we may see and hear your song in our lives. That our lives may be forever changed. Lord, we give you thanks. Go with us as we go through this week. And may we, when we find ourselves slipping, sing that song that brings us back. To that moment when you placed your hands on our lives and said, you are mine. And may we take that song and may we live it day after day after day. Lord, we are yours and, and you are ours. Lead us now, always, as we keep on singing your song. As you go back into this day and through these next days, keep singing. Keep on singing. Don't give up your song. When you find yourself the flaws and, and, and the world's just getting the better of you, keep on singing. And allow the world to know that there is a song shining within you that can cut through all the stuff that's going on and can let us see him. Go in peace. Go in God's song, and may you be blessed now and always. Amen. 
Thank you so much for joining us today. We are glad that you were able to worship with us. Thank you again if this was your first time worshiping with us. We are honored that you chose to be with us today. We do want to remind you that it's by your faithful giving that we've been able to continue our ministries and we've been able to impact lives in our community and beyond um, because of that. And we want to remind you that you can continue to give through our app. If you go down here to the heart button, and press that button. You can set up a one-time gift. You can set up a recurring gift. And we are just really grateful for the gifts that you continue to give to our church. We know that God is big. We know that he is faithful. We can stand here today and recount his faithfulness. I want you to go this week in peace, knowing that he is with you, knowing that he walks beside you, knowing that he has called you to a purpose and that we need to open our eyes to that. Never give up. We will see you next week. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. We love you and we are praying for you.